Money is no object. How do you, legally, ruin your worst enemy's life? I would hire people to constantly mildly inconvenience him. They would stay stopped at stoplights for a few seconds after they turned green, empty his stapler, stuff liquor that, just little things done constantly to get under his skin. Gradually it would drive him insane. Then I would buy a boat. Pretty sure someone is already doing this to me. Continually buy out his job and fire him. When he stops working give him a job offer for minimum wage and no benefits. Make him work the longest days legally possible. Eventually his spouse will tire of having not seeing him and will leave him taking half of what he owned. Then they'd fire him again. Make him work the longest days legally possible. Wrong, it needs to be a 24 hour store McDonald's or a supermarket. Alternate his shifts each week. Week 1, 0600 to 1400. Week 2, 2100 to 0700. Week 3, 1100 to 1900. Week 4, 0400 to 1200. That way it destroys his social life. There are always 4 white vans that park around his truck. When he goes anywhere 2 drive slowly in front with turn signals on for no reason and 2 drive close behind him. If there is more than 1 lane they box him in and the drivers give him a thumbs down. Anytime he goes anywhere 10 people hurry in line in front of him and cause annoying delays at Chipotle, Home Depot, the movie theater, etc. Every day he receives customer complaints in person and via corporate email. At least 5 people boo him publicly and remark how disappointing he is. Got the thumbs down part is incredible, just politely making him feel bad. I would hire people to constantly blow air horns around them, in a restaurant, outside their house, at the doctors, in their car, while walking their dog, they would never be able to escape the horn, they would eventually buy a gun, subbing they would put gun up to their temple and bemp, gun was actually an air horn. I'd use Vuvuzelas instead, D. Pay every person in the world to never even once acknowledge him, convince him that he doesn't exist and he will ruin his own life. Arrange it so that everywhere they go in public, there's a clown. They go to work in the morning, there's a clown walking past the office. They step out for lunch, there's a clown in line at the coffee shop. They stop into the supermarket on the way home, there's a clown going through the checkout. Random clowns become their life, every day. I reckon they'd last 6 months top before going completely insane. You could make this better by paying other people to not notice the clowns. Adds to the effect. HRM, you know, I wouldn't say I have a worst enemy, but if I did, I'd buy their duplex up to whatever, or the house next door, in which case, the deals need to be different, but the same ideas apply, I'd make some seriously nice improvements and not up the rent, I might even do a vertical expansion, I'd probably install some nice stuff in the backyard, a barbecue pit or a fire pit, maybe a really nice fish pond. You know, make it a really nice place to raise kids, have a puppy, the sort of place that you can imagine staying, even though you rent, and I wouldn't charge them rent during this time. I'd make it clear that no one should have to put up with the mess, but they are just being saints. If it was the house next door, I'd have accidentally bought double the wood, would they like a matching fence, or, oh damn it, the missus just hates the expensive fire pit I bought her for her birthday, would they like it I'd arrange for my tree to fall in their yard, and insist on making sure that the roof was replaced and any damaged rooms completely redone. When done, I'd offer them a 2 year lease if they were in the duplex. If they were the house next door, I'd see to it that the repairs had created the setup I needed for the next part. We know that people don't fare well in a situation with chronic infrasound sounds. I guess most folks react to 1719HZ badly. Hallucinations. Bad feelings. Slow but certain depression. There would be a subwoofer in key spots, not constantly pumping out this sound, but playing it enough that they stay uneasy. I'd have it set up that it turned on a little more often in the early morning, when most people are deep in REM sleep so that it was disrupted I wouldn't do this every day. Again, just often enough for them to feel a little less like themselves. I'd continue to play the good landlord neighbor, through an actor, of course, make sure the grass was mowed, repairs were handled promptly, and then I'd up the ante just slightly. I'd put a small speaker in the attic and have it occasional play animal sounds or hushed voices and just some ominous sound. 
they'd complain. I'd of course go up there and say I found a mouse or whatever and that would be the end of it for a while. Then I'd turn the speaker back on. If you do it right, you could literally have this go on for years, and years and years. This literally made me paranoid just reading it. Now I'm wondering if there's some hidden subwoofers in my neighborhood planted by developers to force people to sell their homes. I looked up 1719HZ and you can barely hear it. If your findings are real that is some effed up project mon crap. She's been legally divorced for 5 years, but she and her ex still file their taxes as married joint. It would cost them millions in back taxes and penalties interest as they own several businesses. All I need to do is snoop enough to get her SS number and report them to the IRS hotline. If this is true, all you'd need is a name and an address. The IRS will take care of the rest. I would give all my monies to charity and start huge investment companies like that Virgin Airlines dude. I would donate enough money to cure cancer, AIDS, create solar power, all that crap. Then whenever interviewing, I would tell the world that dude is a C. Flawless. Buy up the houses in his neighborhood and donate them as halfway houses for the mentally ill and criminally insane. Once he moves, rinse and repeat. So that's how Detroit got started. By having everything go well for them. No, really, let them take a job, a good place to live, whatever. On the day I receive the money to execute my plan, I want to hold a funeral for myself, and one for them. Official. Change my name, my job, everything. Let it be known to everyone that I've died, then I would follow them, show up at random points in their day to day activities, someone bringing them coffee or TPS reports, they'd look up and see me, smiling and handing them their drink, waiter at a restaurant, while having dinner with their loved one, walk up and ask them if everything's alright with their food, eventually, at the office, they'll snap, they'll lash out or try to stab me with a pencil, they'll lose their own job. They'll struggle to find a new one, and lose their apartment, and when they're at the very bottom, I'll walk up to them on some cold night, and sit, and talk to them. I'll ask them why they did it, why they continued to hold fast to something they knew was wrong, why they decided to cause so much pain, and when they ask why I'm here, I'll smile, and hand them a newspaper clipping about my funeral, and another about theirs. And from the light of a barrel fire, I'll look over to them with a smile and simply ask them, My dear friend, where is it you think here is? I'll leave. Let them wallow in darkness. It'd make sense. Be painless. This would be their heck, and their cage would be in their own minds. Get him on every p-mail list. Order home STD kits so his SO gets mad on why he is checking himself for STDs. Send flowers with I love you from the kid down down the street's name. And say I enjoy what you did to me. Photoshop pictures and send them to his boss. That probably wouldn't even cost all that much. Mail a box of poop to their house, their job, and their family's houses every day for the rest of their lives in beautiful wrapping paper. Granted they might stop unwrapping them once they catch on. But I figure that the trash cans will eventually have a stench that won't go away. And yes, there is a website you can legally have poop mailed I believe it's about $30 a box. I wrote an elaborate plot but then noticed you mentioned legally. Okay. So, I feel ruining someone's life is far more intimate than being a generic enemy. You gotta know them. Understand what they hold most dear. Make a list and buy out everything and dangle it in front of them to taunt every day. You like this pizza shop too bad. You are banned. You buy your groceries from here OHH I am sorry. Not anymore. OHH you like your local park. Let's build a mall there which will never finish. Ah crap. Someone has opened a 24x7 karaoke bar. Free drinks if they sing. D. Near your house. They play it loud enough for you to hear and they only play that one song you hate. OHH. Those are your friends sorry. They have to move to another city because someone is offering them a new job with ridiculous pay. You like fast internet and good network service so sad. My company has monopoly in your region so no one else would work here. Our mobile network has scheduled down times every 5 minutes and internet speed up to 24 kbps. Enjoy. All of those were just plain evil until the next to last one. That one was just a description of Comcast. 1. 
Give extremely generous campaign contributions to various politicians until someone is willing to designate him a terror threat and an enemy combatant. 2. Have him tortured to death at a CIA black site in Afghanistan. 3. Go on meet the press and talk about how I'd gladly torture innocent people to death as long as we achieve our objective. How vice presidential of you. I would pay every man that looks like him to change their name legally to his, criminal or not and let them do all the work. Niais. I like how legal this one is. I've actually always wanted to write a movie about a guy called a ruiner. He's like a hitman that just ruins people's lives for money instead of killing them. I'd watch the frick out of that. Now, I have by no means ruined his life, nor is this man my worst enemy, but this is what happened. My wife was attacked by a guy that thought she drove too slowly. I was out of town, and that fact bugs me to this day. She was pregnant with our firstborn at the time, but that did not stop this flake from following her into a parking garage and trying to choke her when she got out of the car, asking what the frick her problem was. Luckily a renter cop was right by and stopped the whole thing before it got ugly. Now, they got this guy's plates. He was easy to find. So, we sued him for assaulting a pregnant woman. We had witnesses. Case closed, right? The mother got away. Turns out, he had a good attorney, because he is a freaking repeat offender. Dude is freaking 50 and years old and attacks a 5 month pregnant woman over nothing. Then he gets let off, because he hadn't done much the last 5 years. Naturally, I freak out. Justice must be served. I cannot kill this man, or maim him. I have two children and do not want to spend the next 30 years in jail. On the other hand, I do have friends all over the world as I am a touring musician, and I know people pretty much on every continent. So I ask about 20 friends from all over the world to randomly at a time of their choosing to send this guy a postcard that reads I hope you're doing well. Stay healthy. So, over a period of months, even years, this guy received postcards from all over Europe, the US, even Japan that read a somewhat vague threat. I hope he's paranoid as frick by this point. I would attach a bluetooth mouse to their computer, and then employ someone to move the mouse randomly so they'd get really annoyed using their computer. Wow I don't think you know what an enemy is, not a bad thing at all, but personally, that's the kind of crap I'd do to my brother, a colleague or even my mum if I was feeling a bit mischievous. Arrange for a watermelon to be sent to him every day, every single day of his life. At the start it will be bizarre, after a few weeks will be funny, then it will get irritating, then after months and years, it will become unbearable, undoubtedly he will move, but you will find out his new address, and keep sending a watermelon every day, after a decade or so, you skip a day, he'll be so relieved, he'll be crying with happiness, he'll seek to reconcile with his ex-wife, she left him because of this mess, and children, he'll feel reborn, as if it's the first day of the rest of his life. Then you resume sending the next day. When he opens the door in the morning to get the paper. He will see it. Everything will come crashing down around him. And his unending wail of despair will reach the burning hells and the high heavens both. Buy every building in a 10 mile radius of their home and wreck the neighborhood as bad as legally allowed. Trash all homes to the legal extent. Close all local businesses. Basically turn everything within 10 miles of then into a ghost town. But now they are unable to sell their home as its value has plummeted and therefore they can't leave. Use the money to live incredibly well. Occasionally wave to said enemy as my limo drives by. Send him a card at Christmas with a very generous gift certificate to a local establishment. That works only if your enemy is your ex and he she is suffering. If your enemy has a half decent life. They won't care. Buy his job and fire him. Continuously financially bankrupt him, his extended family and closest friends for years, until they all are forced to live in trailer parks or the ghetto. Then give him a million dollars and let all of his friends and family know he has it. They'll tear him apart to get ahead. This one is so much more evil because it involves freaking over their friend's family as well. The only problem is that if he stays close with any of them, he will gladly share 1 million dollars, a number he no longer knows how to spend. I would pop some popcorn and wait. She's already doing it to herself. It's wondrous to behold. 
buy drones and internet search history, buy everything he wants before he gets to buy it so there's none left, buy companies who offer to hire him and get him fired or not hired unless it's an awful job, get companies to play his least favorite songs on loop always or when he's near, patent his DNA for some patent trolling, launch subtle propaganda campaigns against him, buy dating companies and ban him from them, and social networks, buy politicians to change some laws to make his life harder or possibly illegal, actually, hire people to do all of the above and to come up with more ideas, I don't need to waste my life messing his up, paying for it to be done is enough. Pay someone so that every hour or so they hit him with a water balloon. First it's an inconvenience, but then he spends his life obsessing over trying to get away, how to make it stop, how to stay, dry. That's battery and is illegal. Hire people to follow them around all day for the rest of their life and act like obstacles. Driving somewhere? Nope. There's three cars boxing you and driving 20 km per hour under the speed limit. They refuse to let them change lanes and you miss every exit on the highway. Every parking space is a battle with someone else trying to sneak in. Out running errands? Nope. People everywhere seem to get in your way. They walk in front of you just to slow down or stop. Bump into you without saying sorry and there is always someone stepping hitting the back of your heels. The grocery stores always seem to run out of the items you like to buy. And every business you walk into has just lost its internet connection and can only accept cash. Trying to enjoy a quiet night in? Nope. There are cars outside blasting Derud Sandstorm. They leave after a while. But it's the fact they keep returning that ruins your sleep. Want to get your work done? Nope. Calls every 5 minutes from random people. They don't say anything. Just breathe into the receiver and hang up. If you don't pick up the call goes through your manager as an emergency from your mother. Seats in public spaces are always taken. There is line at every restaurant you want to eat at. Every Wi-Fi signal you find is suddenly slowed by several hundred people accessing the same signal. Someone is always feeding the raccoons on your property and your car always has bird seed on it. You never hear please. Thank you or have a nice day from a random stranger again. Everyone around you appears to be annoyed by your presence or completely oblivious to it. I think someone is already doing this to me. I never thought about it before. I guess I just assumed that's the way life is. What makes a man INB for a pair of balls? Find out how your enemies come to think of themselves as a person. Their self-identity. Once you have a grasp on this bombard their sense of self. Example. Take a businessman who identifies himself by his hard work, his job title, his politics, and his family. Pay people to become his friends and slowly change his opinions. Script situations that make him question his beliefs. Employ him. Give him nothing to do, yet always promote him. Turn him lazy. Have him meet his soulmate paid for by your truly. Get him to cheat on his wife with her. Then once he has completely changed his self-identity, tell him everything. How it's all been a lie. Tell him his friends are all his enemy. Have his soulmate walk in and just start blowing you or something. Tell him his job is fake. Tell him the Easter Bunny and Santa aren't real. Hand him the pistol. I would put them in a group message with about 20 people and pay those 20 people by the hour to have random, pointless conversations all day long. I would buy the rights to the Harry Potter franchise and pay a hack to rewrite it. The series would still be centered around Harry and Voldemort, except Goyle would be replaced by my nemesis, a woman who used to be my boss, and there would be drawn out descriptions of how ugly, fat, and stupid she is. She would die at the end, not from a magical explosion, but being suffocated by her own farts. Give him a billion dollars with no explanation. If the IRS ever believes him, He's still got the lottery winner's dilemma where all his friends and family expect money from him and no matter what he does people will want more from him. And, because he didn't earn the money himself, he will have no idea how to manage or invest it. It will be gone within a year and he'll be left with no friends, alienated family, and liabilities in the form of expensive cars and boats. Sucker. Start a lottery. Have tons of fine print about taxes fees, eligibility, etc. Let him her win the lottery and publicize it. When S he comes to collect it, S he is disqualified or only get a small fraction of the money due to the fine print. Make sure no one publicizes that bit. 
Now the whole world thinks that person is rich, when they really have no money. Sit back and relax while Essie spends his her life being hounded by gold diggers and scammers. Probably not life ruining, but it's amazing for revenge. Put skunk scent and their air intake on their car. It's oil based and won't just wash off. Anytime they're in their car, it will smell like a skunk just sprayed them. This is actually pretty cheap and easy to do, though I'm not sure it's legal. Simple. Pay around a dozen people a day to walk by him her and say things like please wake up, we miss you, I love you, I hope you come back soon, Johnny Sue, you'll sleep. Add several layers of abstraction so they'd never be able to trace it back to me of course. Also, since this original plan would require very little money, I donate enormous sums of money to the charities they oppose. Any worst enemy of mine would have to be a terrible person in some manner. So I'd be fairly safe to say that any charity they hate would be a good one to donate to. I mean, there's no guarantee so I'd have some oversight on this. But if they don't like gay marriage, bam. Every gay marriage advocacy group has a billion dollar budget. Oh, you dislike Planned Parenthood? POW, blank checks all over the place. Gonna get all kinds of contraception up in this mother. I'm going to take a page from another idea I read on here over a year ago. I would bury her in skittles. As in, she goes to her car, bam. It's filled with skittles. Gets her car cleaned out and decides to just go to bed, bam beds filled with skittles. Tries to take a shower instead, bam. Bathroom is filled with skittles. Goes to work the next day expecting a reprieve, bam. Cubicles filled with skittles. Goes to pull her keys out of her pocket, bam. Pockets filled with skittles. I would drive her insane from skittles appearing dang near everywhere around her, making her life a living heck. She becomes used to it. Over time she just adapts to rummaging through skittles to find her keys. One day she reaches in her pocket and, no skittles. Just a small folded card. She opens it and in elegant handwriting it says taste the rainbow. Work with his local city officials to make sure Comcast becomes the new local cable monopoly. Thousands will suffer but so will he so it's worth it. Every morning I'd buy him a coffee and a bagel. Then weeks later when he's become accustomed to it, I'd inexplicably stop. In this thread people that forget harassment is illegal. Having an elaborate system to not get caught doesn't make it least illegal. I take over the banks that hold all of their debt and credit. I increase the interest at a steady rate and apply finance fees while buying up equal assets to theirs and devaluing the markets until they have no wealth. Then I crush them by increasing all costs I can access like gas and food where they live. I will reduce the quality of education and community services in their city until crime becomes a necessity. My enemy will have no choices. They will be oppressed and struggling just to get to zero. It'll be sweet. First, intelligence is key. Make sure you know where he is at all points of the day. Email, telephone, contacts. Make sure you can get at him whenever you want. By voice, email, anything. But don't let him know that, yet. Second, make him his own agent of destruction. He has a wife, hire a ridiculously hot escort to flirt with him. Try to sleep with him. Then, get photos of him naked, or something incriminating. Text them to him, anonymously. He has kids, make them hate him. Show them how their father is cheating on their mother. Let things play out. His wife will leave him, and his kids will hate him for what he did. Third, once he has ruined his own life, offer him a vice. Introduce him to drugs or alcohol. Give him a destructive way to handle his guilt. Fourth, alienate him from his friends. Change all their contact information in his phone. Fabricate webs of lies. Implicate him in stealing from them, or hitting on their girlfriends. Isolate him from everybody who cares for him. Fifth, get him fired from his job. Should be relatively easy to do at this point, considering the previous steps. At this point, he's divorced. His kids hate him. He's a drug addict. He has no friends or family. He has no job. His family hates him. Swoop in and tell him everything you have done to ruin his life. Lay out the entirety of the plan, showing him careful deliberate maliciousness to destroy his happy life. Finally, you shoot him very carefully in the spinal column such that he continues his life as a quadriplegic. You leave and never look back, knowing he will spend his days alone, 
a ruined man. As someone who was stalked online, it would be nice to pay someone to stalk the crap out of my ex. Never crossing the line, no stealing, just find him online and constantly send him screenshots of what he was up to. Someone is always watching. Have him followed by a person with a sign that says if you treat that guy like crap I will pay you $1000 and let the world's greed ruin him. Buy every insurance company in the world, make insurance really cheap for everyone, except for him. Not only does he have to pay for his own insurance, he has to pay for the insurance of everyone else. I'd find a cure for cancer, then give him cancer. Oh, you want a cure? For everyone else, it's free. For you, it costs $10 per person who has cancer. I'd do the same for AIDS, but it wouldn't stop there. While he's taking his final breaths, waiting for the sweet touch of death, I would revive him. I would make him live in this horrible world of his. If he tries to kill himself, I'd revive him. I would make sure he lives for as long as he can, almost dying of every illness he could, but never dying. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Buy for now.